Hi. Let us see how this is going to go today. So, hey, there's James Breakage. Easy, man. Hi, James. You've got to hit request. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining. It's looking rather lovely. So, today I'm chatting to a dear friend and a producer who's just such a gangster, Breakage. Now, he's a bit of a technological uh, marvel, so let's see if this works today. There you go. There's James, James Breakage. Going. It's going to work. Hey, Shruti. Hi, Yazzie. How's it going? I'm live, indeed. Easy. James! What's up, bro? <laughs> this is really weird. Why is it weird, man? I don't do the whole live thing, so... I know, I'm, I'm just happy to agree to this, bro. Yeah, yeah you're lucky. <laughs> you're looking good, though, man. I think everyone's lucky seeing your wholesome face. You haven't even shaved your head, considering... No, no, no shave, no nothing. I kind of forgot about this until about an hour ago. <laughs> 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 Wicked. Easy, Simon. All right, Matt what Ryan, what are you saying? What are you drinking? I'm having a JD and Coke. I'm having a coffee. So. I mean, that's about right. That's about right. That kind of reminds me of the last time we met. Because you stopped drinking and that. So. Uh, no, no, no. I still drink. I just don't drink anywhere near as much. Oh, because of the health thing that happened in that? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I, uh, that makes it sound like I've got, like, alcohol problems. <laughs> uh, no, nothing to do about that. Yeah, it's just better that for my health that I don't drink as much. I'm not, I don't think I'm meant to. Yeah, fair enough. You know, be boring. So that, that makes sense. Uh, Actually, check, did you have a drink last time we met at Fabric? I can't remember. I don't so think I'm gonna say, I don't think I was drinking that night. No. From what I remember. From what well, I remember. anyway, thanks for doing this, and I appreciate your like, you know, your your non-shaved head, which every fucker seems to be doing now. Where I'm not. You know what? I did order some clippers. <laughs> uh, because. I don't usually let my hair grow this long, uh, and my, you, know, you know, I just usually have my head shaved quite low anyway, but uh, it's just a long thing at the moment, getting anything delivered, so here I am. Well, there you go, and, and so, you've, got, you've got your full, your full I'll tell you what I've been doing, I've been plucking mm. like a demon, I might just like use this opportunity while I'm in the yard to sort of grow out my eyelashes, or my eyebrows rather, so that... You have a unibrow sort of, going. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Little little Good. windscreen wiper effect going on. <laughs> so for those that don't know, right, Breakage is one of my favourite producers of all time. The guy's like known, you're known for drum and bass, you're known for dubstep, you're a bass don, but you've also done some production that's just outside the norms, man. Like uh, some of your favourite work that I love is kind of verging on trance and house as well. Yeah, yeah. Which is I, nuts. I don't I, I just sort of go with whatever I sort of feel at the time. I don't, I don't you know, like, like a lot of them, like if it's not, if it doesn't really fall under drum bass or dubstep, I don't really know what genre for the most part it falls under. I just, right. It just feels like, good. I just like it or I don't like it. If I like it, I finish it. If I don't like it, I don't. Do, well, sometimes I finish it anyway, just for the sake of it. But. Just as a completionist. But you yeah. know what? The, the other thing is, right, as, a, as someone that plays your stuff out, like you've got a whole amazing load of drum and bass, your new track's out, it's given away for free. You know, you've got yeah. all this kind of stuff going on, but the weird tracks like Express, which go from like a house beat to dubstep. Yeah, thing. it's like 115 and then slows down into like, I think, I think, I think it's so technically, I think it slows down into like 35 BPM. Oh, really? Something, something, something weird, <laughs> something weird. So like, it slows down to speed up. Yeah, I mean, it took me ages to figure it out, but I think it ended up at like 35 BPM. Which and makes that. sense, because that's half a 70, which is half of 140. There you go. Yeah, mathematics yeah. and shit. You know it, I thought it would be more worth it, and it was cool, but like, the amount of work that went into like, you know, like, cause it's all the same sounds as well, and then like, it, it, yeah, it just got a bit mad. My mate Simon's just like, yo, more BPMs, yo. You met Simon, haven't you? Simon, my best mate. We met you runs bars and pubs. You've met, him. yes, You've yes, yes, met him. yes, yeah, yeah, man. And then Rufi saying hello from India, Vandana saying hello from New York. Can you see all these comments, by the way, James? Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying not to look at okay. anything. I'm looking at you. 
Because oh, mate, I'm touched, touched bruv. I'm touched. So awkward, so. Nice. But if anyone watches has got questions, right, there's a little question mark button at the bottom. You can hit that and ask James anything you want. So it can be Within nerdy. Reason. <laughs> Within reason. Yeah, exactly. All those kind of odd questions that I'd ask you, man. But yeah, I mean, that's, that, that, that track Express, I play out constantly. Because like when I'm coming out of sets that are like on a house tempo and I want to take it up to something more bassy, perfect. Yeah. Like oh, weapons nice and stuff. That's what yeah, it was man. kind of for. Like, you know, like, it was... It started off as something like I wanted to have like an intro because you know like especially towards uh, like with the dubstep stuff like I always think not always so sometimes I think you know like if someone is playing before you and they absolutely finish on like some absolutely smashing bass melting the most extreme track of the night yeah. You can't really go up there and match that energy. You've got to, like, reset it. Yeah. And that would be, like, my intro slash reset. You've got, like, the long bit of just people just like, oh, okay. And then when yeah. it gets to 140, it's like, you know, like, you sort of, you can work yeah. away from, from that tune. Yeah. And yeah, so you, you, you step, step into step the rain. And I got a bit carried away with, like, you know, like, doing, like, live percussion and all that kind of crap. <laughs> and then it was wicked. doing a vocal and... You know, I just thought, you know, like, instead of just having this sort of rough skeletal thing that it started off with, let, let me just build it up into something that I can actually put out. Um, yeah. should listen to that again. Um, listen to it. I yeah. think it's fucking amazing. I wish you'd do more Probably stuff in about tempo like switches, four or five mate. years. So yeah, maybe it's awesome. I, sh I should do more tempos. It's wicked. <laughs> Dude, and then your, remix, think, uh... your remix of Massive Attack as well, Paradise Circus, is still one of my favourites. Oh, cheers. Yeah, man, totally. Yeah, that's, that's still mad that they wanted me to butcher one of their tunes, but I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Hi, I'm Bikash. She's from Delhi. Oh, no, Bombay now as well. Easy. Hey. Yeah, there's lots of lovely people jumping on this. This is Hi. quite sweet. Yeah. Yeah, man. So basically, Simon, Simon mentioned something before, right? And I want to get there. I just mentioned it on the comments. So the first time we met was backstage mm -hmm. at Fabric. And, and I first hurt you. You threw your trainer at me, like like yeah. proper fucking George Bush styles. <laughs> I di I didn't know he was known for playing trainers. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, for a shirt you because it was. But that's the thing, and then you banged on about the construction of your shoe, and I reckon, yeah. right? Yeah. Is that one of your like biggest passions outside of music making? Is like nerding out about trainers? No, not at all. It's Fuck off! Not... You went on at me for half an hour, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I really like bow shoes because like. They the were fly like, knits, right? Hang yeah, on. the fly knit racers. Yeah, yeah, so like, not those ones. They're like, uh, can I be bothered? Yeah, bugger it. Going a little mission. <laughs> Funnily enough, believe it or not, I'm at home. So, uh, let's see. Sorry, let me turn on the light and move the hallway. There uh, we go. We're going into Breakage's trainer closet. This is wicked. Like these. Nice. I've got, I've, I've, I've got about. Dude, they're the same colour. They're, they're, they're like mine, but grey. Yeah, but then I've got them in black. See, I just like that shoe in particular. See. I mean, they stopped making it now, and it really made me sad. They changed it for like some other kind of iteration of the fly knit. I've got some more in like a different cover. But, uh, and you're telling me you're yeah, not like, geeky about trainers? I'm not like that. I'm not like you know, like like Alex. Alex the is the DJ probably... version of like Kitsch or something like that. I, uh, yeah. yeah, I I don't have like some crazy train collection, but like. Sorry, I just did something really stupid. Just, what did <laughs> you do? Turned up the brightness on. Uh, turned up the brightness oh, on right. my phone. Hey, Bailey's here. Easy, Bailey. Time. Hello, mate. Uh, yeah, I just, I just, you know, like I just find a pair of trainers that I like, and then I'll probably buy like about three pairs of them if I can. Uh, so, um, what are you nerdy about then, apart from tunes? <sighs> Because I've got Lego, Prince, and Batman. What what have you got? Uh, that's a good question. What do I like? Because I, I thought like the trainers one was the one, especially how we met. You know. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm yeah, look, like, quite nerdy about films. Uh, I watch a lot of films. Not all of them good. Sometimes I just a lot of the time I watch films, watch films, just so I can say that I've seen it. 
Uh, and what do you, do you ever got, find examples in that? Like, do you, do you sit there recording them? Huh? No, no, not even. You, you record them? No. No, just just watch them to watch them. And uh, I've got into cooking recently. I wouldn't say I'm nerdy about it or fanatical. Yeah, I just this is all just proper like dad business. As soon as like you yeah. proper like family man vibes. Yeah, yeah. Man, I, I expected like, there to be some proper deep chat about something. No, like there's. I think music between like music and family, it sort of takes up like a solid ninety percent of my day. So. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Actually, yeah, you know what? Considering this, this whole get, period where you're I, not you, touring, you know, what it is, that. Get, you know what it is. I don't have like one thing in particular that I'm like really into, but I will like fall into something for a pocket of time. So, like, and then I'll be all about it. And I want to find out like loads of stuff about it, and like, and then I'll just move on to something else, like it never happened. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you know, you know, you know. Did you see the the the, the chat with Knitted two weeks ago? No, I did not. But I imagine it would have been great. Because we just, I went on about knitting to him because it was just. <laughs> I'm leaving, man. Oh, mate. Oh, mate. But listen, man, like, you know, you've had a bunch yeah. of time off for, like, obviously this whole this whole thing now means you're not yeah. touring. But you had a bunch of house stuff. And that, plus your family, has got to have been quite a reset. So, do you, I mean, like, that whole, the way you dealt with your health issues is nuts. Uh, you want to tell just, the story just, about what happened? Uh, uh, or not uh, really? Or shall I tell No, 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 it's fine. Like, basically, like, uh, my health started to deteriorate. I just thought I was getting old. I left it for about maybe, like, six months, I think. Uh, and just for context for people watching, me and James Breakage went on tour to India together. James plays nightclubs all over the fucking shop and is obviously in demand as Breakage. But, yeah, go on, bro. Uh... Yeah, I uh, so my health started deteriorating. I started losing my eyesight. Uh, I was like, my all my skin was like splitting on my hands. I had like big cuts on my hands constantly. Uh, going to the toilet loads, constantly dehydrated. And that's not to do sleeping. drugs or anything. That's just genuinely going. To no, sleep. no, no. This is like all day, every day, and uh, a bunch of other stuff. And then I left it and left it and left it just thinking I was getting old uh, until my partner luckily told me to uh, go to the hospital and uh, turned out I had type 1 diabetes. Never knew. So, yeah, I had to make a lot of life changes. Uh, one, getting over my fear of real life blood. Which... <laughs> oh, mate. I, I I just remembered that time we had that. Actually, I've got something to tell you. Go on, carry on, carry on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like I can deal with blood in like a film. Blood in real life is well. Now I'm fine with it, but like over time. Because when I was going for my leg operation, you were well squeamish, and I was yeah, like, "Bro, yeah, you yeah, just you, you nearly fucking picture, died." I think you showed I, me a picture or something. I tried to show you a picture of my eye because I had my eye cut open and so yeah, removed yeah. from the inside. That's still, that's still like rank. Yeah. <laughs> that's still absolutely rank yeah uh so yeah that happened i mean i i i'm trying not to think about your eye and your kneecap no. it was um, here it was a lump it's cut happened. out yeah and uh, yeah i just sort of like you know i i, I think i moped for it like a couple of days i still moan about it all the time yeah because it's the british way I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just what you do uh, but like I just you know like I moped and wallowed. There may have been a couple of tears in the first couple of days. And I just got on with it, bro. Like, yeah, you know I mean, like it, it, it's it is what it is. And you know, like like that, like, nothing's gonna change that. This is this is my life. Let's get on with it. Yeah, you know I mean. Did your tunes get fiercer after that? No, I didn't write anything for like. A year, <laughs> a year maybe. After no, not a year. It can't be in a year. I think it was like I got. It happened in at the end of February, and then I think I was back in the studio finishing my last release, like three track EP, like probably like 
a week after. Yeah. And then, like, it was just really hard to concentrate because, you know, like, the whole... The, the best way to deal with it is to have, like, a daily sort of routine. Like, you know, like, I like, do this at this time and I eat at that time and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Check and you've got to check your blood sugar and whatnot. So, like, it was really off-putting creatively. And then it's only around, like, I think September I started, like, writing bits and bobs again. Yeah. Uh and yeah, like creatively, it, it it sort of started to come together again there, but it was a, it was a bit of a long journey trying to uh, get back to that point. Uh, yeah, proper battle. Yeah, that was the hardest part, I think. What about touring and stuff? Were you like, I mean, obviously, as you know, right? So going, you know, uh, going on tour is a bit fucking later. takes it out of you. I had my first gig two weeks after, and I just told, I just changed my rider, and like certain things that I I needed uh to you know to make me feel more comfortable i think i think because i'm older and you know like typically something like this you get quite young and i think you're a lot more fearless at that age whereas you yeah. know, when you're <clears throat> deep into your 30s and something like this happens and you've got you know like a partner and a kid and you know stuff like it it definitely makes the idea of doing gigs a lot more terrifying but uh, yeah yeah i had like another gig two weeks later and i was like you know what like i i never i never cancel things because i'm not like oh because i'm not well or something like that. Yeah, yeah 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 i'm not that kind of guy like there's got to be a reason for it yeah i've got to physically yeah. not be able to make it mm. uh so yeah, I just did it, and I was like, I'll just go on with it. And luckily, it was with like a good friend of mine, uh, Paul Jube. Yeah. So he was like, he kept an eye on me, and the promoters knew ahead of time, which you know makes it easier. And it was just all very cool and calm. And, nice. Yeah, just sort of like progressed it from there. How's and, your rider like, changed then? Because I guess the booze is off, so it's all like what, like swings. No, and booze that, is still on. Sort of like. Booze is still on. Uh, so, like, <laughs> You know, like, obviously, like, mixes and stuff. And, you know, like, the amount that I drink. And, mm. you know, like, it, say, like, I turn up and... Oh, mixes as in, like, Coke and, and, and yeah, like, orange I juice. Have, like, Not like your DJ mixer, because I was like... But, like, you know, like, I can't have, like, tonic water or... You know, I can have a beer every now and again. It's actually quite useful. Like, I was at a gig with um, Marla and, oh yeah, last time I saw you at Fabrics, so Dave's Petrosol was there as well. And the last time I saw Marla was in LA. And it was wicked because I just get everyone's booze riders. It's wicked. Like I just got, like Marla gave me a bottle of bottle of tequila. I was like, happy days. <clears throat> saw you at Fabric, got all your drinks tokens. Dave gave me all this. I was like, this is happy days. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's awesome. The, the thing is as well, like I think, you know, like, you know, sometimes I might be out and I might might have a fair few drinks, but then uh, as I get older, it's not all the time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean you've got I, responsibilities I and your health, right? That's the other thing. Well, yeah, like I don't want to like, you know, like I I have to be up at a certain time in the morning. I have certain things to do, and you know, like even like without all of that, like say playing somewhere like Fabric, and then going home and then I've got to be up at like you know my son ain't gonna let me sleep until you know like midday one o'clock love the old yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 you got no time to recover yeah exactly exactly yeah. I, I, you know I want to wake up relatively fun functional well has that affected the way you work and the way you write music then as well all of your whole lifestyle switch because I like, if you're if you're out getting fucked up and playing gigs you're going to get some of that energy and stick it into your music, right? Yes Is and no, but I, find, for you or not? I find now, like, uh, sorry, I'm just going to close this blind because the sun is the mm. uh, Like, I find that, uh, like, now, like, I have, well, up until all of this happened and we're all yes. stuck at home all the time, mm. uh, I obviously had, like, more strict hours on, to which I can work you know, which is while my son's at nursery and, 
Uh, so I just sort of like, I find now, like, I make more use of the time. And also, I guess you don't go somewhere to, to make music, right? Roughly, probably have like half the amount of time, if that, to work. But I probably get the same amount done because I'm just cutting out all the like, sitting around waiting for something to happen or like just procrastinating going on Instagram. <laughs> Thanks for doing this again, bro. No, 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 no. Okay. That wasn't a cue to thank me. Yeah, well, like, I mean, like, you know, you like, you it's mean. very easy to, like, I think when doing, like, any kind of job where you haven't got a boss breathing down your back, it's very easy to veer off. Yeah, yeah. and just, just get distracted. But, you know, did you do you still travel to a studio or do you work where you stay? Oh, I, I, I work from home now. Right, right. Because you used yeah. to have a studio, like, outside, right? I used to have, that yeah, whole I used to have complex like, years ago, I had a studio at Waterloo. Mm. And, uh, for some reason, are... I thought you were in Tile Yard now, for some reason. No, no, no. no Just because everyone's moved there, there, I guess. Uh, yeah, a lot, of, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the guys that were in the studio in Waterloo ended up at Tile Yard. I think all of yeah. them, apart from me and Casper. Uh, but I... I, I from there, I just went and went back to, you know, like, just got myself a two-bedroom flat and used the spare room as a, yeah. Uh, was a studio. studio. Yeah. And, like, you know, like, there was something, as much as I enjoyed having, like, a really nice studio and, like, you know, go to people, oh, like, let's record some vocals, like, come around to yeah, all of that. I kind of miss just being able to roll out of bed and just work on the tunes. Whereas, like, you know, like, going from... Getting to Waterloo would take me about 30 minutes. And it would... You know, like, you would have an idea in your head and you'd be on the train, like, trying your best to keep that idea. Yeah. By the time you get to the studio, have a chat, buy a coffee, blah, 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 and no, it's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I need to get back to just like I can literally wake up, not even get dressed. You know and I'm I mean? guessing, I'm guessing when you started out, that was how it was as well. You just got up and just hit yeah, the yeah, computer yeah, yeah. and got on with yeah. it. Yeah, like you know, it was, you know, I was, I was still in my mum's house for a long time <laughs> before yeah. that. So, so like I kind of missed having that kind of vibe of like. Obviously, not you know, like at the time when I was doing my early stuff, it was in my bedroom, but uh, you know, like just having a room that I can walk into and go, like, right, studio stuff, guys. Uh, so, what was the moment where shit changed for you when it went from like you being in your mom's house and just rolling out to suddenly going, oh shit, this is working, I can buy more gear? And I'm, I'm, I mean, gear in terms of equipment, not no, in terms yeah, of uh, drugs, you uh, know what I mean? easy guessy, how's it I... going, bro? It was at some point while on Digital Soundboy, Shy turned around to me and he's like, there's a spare room at the studio, you need to take it. And I was like, mm. he's like, you can afford it, it's fine. He's like, you'll be yeah. fine. It'll be okay. I was like, yeah. I don't have to pay money every month. Yeah, yeah. it's a next rent. Sorry, I'm on the yeah. uh, I'm paying money every month. Mm. And he was like, it's fine. He's like, you'll be all right. And, uh, yeah, I just sort of, I just sort of took a leap of faith. And, uh, yeah, you know, I could do it every month. Uh, you know, sometimes easier than others. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but that's what, I mean, yeah. that was, what, what, what track was the turning point? Well, I reckon Clarendon, right, around that point? Or before no, that? no, that was way before. Uh, I would say, like, it was around... I think I moved in there, like, around 2009, 2010, maybe. Oh, wow, that late. Okay, so around your first, right, your debut album times, right? Yeah, after that. Oh, after shit, that. okay. I think it was... Oh, no, no, I, don't, like... I don't mean... I don't mean um... Uh, this too shall pass. No, no, I mean, no, um... no, no, no. Foundation. Yeah, no, it was after that. Yeah. Let me have a look. Uh, Discogs. Discogs should tell me. Discogs. You're on your own, your own Discogs. Yeah, yeah. I guess it, we just spoke about that Massive Attack remix, bro. It's amazing. I still... See, that's... that was done at the studios, I think. And then, see, like, that... Let me see. 
That's proper, like, so almost that, sounds so, like classic Massive Attack. So it must have been around, yeah, like around 2009, 2010. Then I finished the album, and then the album came out when. Let's have a look. This is really bad, but I can't remember any of this stuff. <sighs> It is what it is. So the album came out in 2010, so I must have moved in there, yeah, like late 2010, maybe. Right. Or like, yeah, like around maybe summer 2010. And then I think I left there uh, maybe 2013, perhaps. Huh. I think. I think and it, then back yeah, in. Like, a good two or three years. Ago. But it was, it was fun. It was really fun. Like, uh, I mean, like, at, at that point, there was a whole, you know, there's an awful lot of collaborations going on. Like, the recent one with, like, Shy and Lily, for example, mm -hmm. happened at, at Tile Yard, right? Because their rooms are just there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was just thinking, there was a whole load of stuff that you were producing or involved with that wasn't necessarily with your name on? Uh, not a whole load. It's about, I suppose, a couple of bits. <laughs> Any you could talk about? Or is it all uh... on the cover? At that point, there wasn't many. Like, I did some stuff for obviously for Jess Mills, who did a tune for me called Fight and Fire, and I did a couple yeah. of singles for her. And then there's a lot of like, you know, recording stuff that never came out. Uh, and I got to work, you know, I, I got to work in that period, I got to work with some really, really cool people, which was, mm. which was great. Uh, and got to meet. And some... even now, surely you must be in demand from a bunch of artists just like saying, yeah, we want breakages sound or to produce stuff. We even ghost produce. Uh, I'm... I or should I shut up and talk, not talk about that? For a while. Yeah, like. Okay. I, I, I do the odd bit. I do the odd bit. I did. Uh, what was the last production production thing I did? Uh, I think the last tune I produced for someone was I did a track called London on Getz's last album. I think that was okay. what I did. Uh, and then I do like a bit of like you know mix engineering and additional production on stuff as well. Yeah, which is fun. It, I, you got I, 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 I quite enjoy that because it's I I enjoy the problem solving element of. Uh, of mix engineering, and I enjoy, you know, like the uh, with additional production. You know, like someone's already got a really sick vibe, and you can just hear that little little tiny thing that can push it over the edge. You know, like it's always. I think always it's, it's good like to get a second pair of ears on stuff, whether it be someone just like. Yeah, like someone mixing the tune or someone doing additional production or just sending it to someone who you know is going to be like brutally honest. Yeah. What I do. I send it to people who are absolutely going to, you know, if there's something wrong. I mean, that's the thing is you've also, got, to find out. Huh? you've also got a distinct sound as well, bro, which is the interesting thing. Like your engineering is fucking second to none. Like you could hear that, that, that sort of precision from back then, but somehow you still maintain the vibes, which is kind of a difficult line to walk to engineer things so well and precisely but also keep that going you know <laughs> I, you get I fucking boring otherwise bro you know? I, don't know, like, I, ah. I don't think of myself as like some great great engineer uh i just i don't know like i just i never bothered to really learn even though i went to i went to school for music and i went to college to do music but i never actually learned how to Never really, not never bothered with it because that sounds really lazy. I did bother on the actual music, music side. Uh, not that I'm some great player or anything or anything like that. I, I think of myself more of a jack of all trades, master of none. But I think with the, with the engineering side, I didn't really know what I was doing for a long time. And then uh, it's only when I start paying attention to my friend. Dean Barron, uh, he's a mix engineer who also, ha how I know Nitted. Right. Well, he used to be, he used to uh, work with Nitin, and then he started working with Shy, and then he started working with me as well, and then now me oh. and him occasionally work together. But it's only when I started paying attention to what he was doing, and like how, you know, like I would sort of like, 
give them a track to mix and what will come back would sound so much better. Yes. Yeah. So much better, like, you know. And that's when I was like, right, I need to learn how to, like, really execute what I'm doing properly. Mm. So I started, you know, like, I started watching him more and paying attention and learning and just learning as much as I could. And, like, I just always try and make sure I'm learning something new on that side. Uh, because there's constantly, like, new sort of, like, things to find out it's like it's ever expanding sort of like learning yeah. and i i think i think that's what sort of not my only sort of source of excitement is that like i said like, i love problem solving and i love order and i love you know order with a tiny bit of chaos in it uh like Just i always, I, always like, I, 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 I said like my perfect mix stand is like it's like a perfectly painted white wall with like a finger smudge in it. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like modern art, basically. Yeah, it's like, like, it's like it's contemporary like, you know, art. Like, if you could like get a time machine and, you know, like sit in on like Salvador Dali uh, and then just go, that's amazing. Yeah. Better than that. And like just That's ruin it. Fa- like, wait, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. You'd say that if you were in a time machine and you went to see Salvador Dali, like, no, I can never time, bet you'd it. go. It's like, do you know what I mean? All right, like and then you'd fuck off. Absolutely you'd great, and then and then just making it a bit shit. Okay. Because like, right, you know, just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, You know, like I've never thought of this before, but like I think it was in the Steve Jobs movie where he was saying about like when you know when he went off and made it that other computer that's like a cube. And everyone was like, oh, but it's not a problem. Oh, the next computer. The next computer that did yeah, the whole yeah, next yeah, yeah. OS that and Windows And it wasn't um, actually yeah. a perfect square. Mm. Because he's like, you can't perceive a perfect square as a square. Because it has to be off. But yeah. it's like, you can't have a perfect mix. It would be boring. It, like, it would sound rubbish. You need something, but just, just like, oh be perfect if it weren't for that being too loud or that being a bit ropey or yeah. like resonance here and, and you know like little things like that and I'm not saying I could engineer the perfect tune because I can't I don't think anyone can but I think it's those imperfections in it that make it you know good perfect yeah not perfect but, but yeah okay the imperfections know. make it human basically yeah you, yeah, you need to humanise a bit and I think I've learned that repeatedly the hard way that like I'll sit there and I'll work something into oblivion and then I'll flip over to the demo that I made in like 40 minutes and be like this sounds so <laughs> so much, <laughs> so better. much better than the one that I've spent two weeks on uh, I think that's where most of my time goes uh, yeah so I guess he's asking uh, is a dear friend from back in the day also an esteemed producer and DJ is like when when you start on YouTube what do you usually start with <sighs> It changes. It changes. Like, uh, sometimes it'll start with, like, if I've got a bass line in my head, it'll start with bass line. If I've got nothing and, like, you know, like, I'm like, I feel creative, but I've got no starting point, I'll probably start with drums. Uh, yeah. Just because, you know, it's just easy because you've got, like, the pace. And then once you've got the pace and the drums, you can do a bass line and then you've got the backbone of a whole tune. It's like, you know, sometimes, like, sometimes I'll, I'll start a tune and it's just got those two things. I'm like, do I really have to do anything else? <laughs> and not in a gloaty way. It's just like, I'm just so happy. Well, it's called like, drum and bass, bro. I mean, yeah, it's like, I'm just, you know, like sometimes I'll just vibe <laughs> off of just like having those two sounds and they're not even particularly good. But it's just like, yeah, this is fun, you know? It's like, yeah. I just I just sort of work until I find something that's fun and if I can sit there and you know, just play it without doing anything for like ages. Yeah. Uh I'll always have like you know, like say I have like a couple of bars of just a drum beat and then the bass line comes in. And if I'm like content with that for like a couple of hours I'm like, okay, cool, like let me start looking at other elements. With, uh, without any stimulation I'm like, yeah, everything just takes me a lot longer than when I see other people doing it. I, I <laughs> <laughs> everything just takes a little bit longer. I have to sit there and see if I get bored. 
and I kind of wish I had that like the workflow of other people where like you just see them like just like bang 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 I remember doing a uh, a session with Benga years and years ago so about about maybe 11 years ago 12 years ago and mm-hmm. we would literally give an idea like, like maybe 20 minutes and if it weren't working for me in 20 minutes it was it was out the door yeah and I was like I used to spend a day on one idea and yeah you know and that sort of gave me a bit of a kick up the arse not enough of a kick up the arse because that was like you know like I've never seen someone before like come up with an idea and you're like yeah that's really good and it's like nah and then on to the next and then on to the next and then on to like yeah like an actual machine it was crazy uh, I think it's about instant groove right that was the thing it was like yeah, quick yeah, instant yeah, yeah, groove yeah, yeah, like yeah. if it's in a groove and you're feeling it right bang. yeah yeah, and that's that's all I look for is like just the group, like mm. you know, like all the other stuff around it will happen. Yeah. But if it hasn't, like, if the groove doesn't automatically get me, then I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna like it. You know? See, the, it, 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 you've ju- this for some fucking reason just took me back to what you told me in India, right? Uh, which was about your essential tour packing, right? So we're talking about perfections with the imperfections so james said to me that the two things he has to take on tour is a clothes brush and a lip gloss yeah because if you're wearing all black you can't have like bits and bobs on it no doesn't that go against your whole idea of imperfections bro no because uh, <laughs> that's that's just that's just you know simplifying things. you know like i don't i don't I don't wear black clothes a lot because it's cool. Like, I, I just wear it because I don't... Oh, mate, I feel you. I mean, you know. But, yeah, like, for the most part, I can just wake up and just put on anything. And it's fine. Because most, like, 99% of it's black. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like... I, don't, I mean, there you I go. I don't have to think about it anymore. Like, I can just take that out of the equation. Actually, you speaking know, of which... It's when I wear, like, a white T-shirt because now it's got to a point where I've got other coloured clothes so I just feel really awkward wearing them nowadays because it's just like I just look at myself and I'm like oh it looks so bright and I'm trying to break the cycle of it though but it just requires too much too much brain power. and also let's be honest it doesn't and fit it, the moody DJ profile yeah Nitin's here alright bro yeah yeah it does help on the uh, moody DJ look yeah yeah Nitin's on oh, actually it'll probably like this gold t-shirt yeah <laughs> a little bit of a fashion show for you there, bro. No. But yeah, uh, man. But yeah, no, no, you need to have, yeah, like, uh, lint roller and uh, curtain brush. There you go. Basic stuff. My, my tour, brother, tour yeah. basics. Forget the booze, forget the riders, forget the tech. Lint roller, yeah. clothes brush. Yeah. But listen, quickly, what are you working on next, bro? Anything else, anything else coming up that's just going to be sick? Anything coming up that's going to be sick? Yeah. Oh, well, I haven't got any gigs, funnily enough. <laughs> no shit. Uh, I just, I'm just, I keep on saying I've finished it, but I actually haven't because I've, I've got a project file of it sitting here right in front of me. I'm working on an EP, uh, which I could, uh, except like I'm just want to see if I can make it a bit better. But I've just had it all up five percent. Uh, seeing as we've Isn't that just a, a constant thing, though, bro? Yeah, like I need to, you know, like I need to at some point just say enough is enough and call it a day with that. Which, you know, like I'll see how it goes this evening with this with with my tweak, and if not, I'm done because it has been like six months. So, <laughs> you know, but I just I just hate that feeling of like. I can I can look back at a theme or like a release and go like eh, I could do it better now or like I'll change this now or I'll change that now. But I hate that feeling of something coming out and knowing before it came out I could have made those changes or done it better or explored different things. So I always make sure I sort of like you know if if it's if something's bugging me to just do it because I've I've done it before where like. You know, like I've just been like, no, no, bugger it, and being a bit 
lazy about it. And it's just not done well for me. Like, in terms of, yeah. you know, like, I, I'll i just hate the tune forever. And I don't want to hate the music like that. <laughs> you know, I already don't like it as, as that much as it is. Because, you know, like, I think the way that someone, the way that I perceive my music, I think, you know, like, I only hear, like, what I've done wrong. Or what I could have done better. Or it's not as good as this. Doesn't sound as good as that. It hasn't got enough vibe in it. No, 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 no. And it's just a list of complaints. Yeah. And ones that I like more just have less complaints. Uh, That's a good measure, I guess, bro. The, the, the tunes that I'm kind of, I've got less problems with are the all right. Yeah. The rest of yeah. the off. Yeah. Like, I, I'm, mm. I'm trying to learn to, like, just accept my tunes for what they are. But, uh, it's, it's Which is shocking because they're amazing. So like, whatever, bro. Like, but, fucking I'll, I'll people would sort of that, like, die to have at least a quarter of that skill. So you know, there you go. No, thank you, thank you. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's so like if I can get this down to like one complaint less, that's a win. Yeah, uh, it'll, it'll be a win in my book. Well, and I guess you have the time to work on it now as well, so there's no excuse. There's no gigs. Yeah, now. exactly. Well, like, like you said. To be, honest, to be honest, I want to get it out of the way. I've just started learning how to use the different sequencer, and uh, I'd like to make some more music in this time. Yeah. Yeah. But while well, uh, I tell you what, I beg you, you make something that has a tempo change in it, please, because that, like, after Express, I'm like, oh, there's mate, nothing I'm else. using new sequencer. I can barely put a loop together, let alone. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone change tempos and stuff like that. But no, that is definitely on t something on the to do list is to like get another one of those sort of like speedy tempo things because it was, you know, like thinking about it now, it was fun. Like at the time, it was stressful, but it's definitely fun now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's a wicked weapon, bro. But look, man. I'm going to let you go because I, I tell you what, thank you so much for doing any of this because I know that, you know, you hate this whole chat. <laughs> I know you hate this. Really so do. basically, James rung me before he goes, you bastard. I wouldn't do this at all otherwise. So, you know, it's yeah. very good of you, bro. Yeah, I, I don't really, like, uh, I don't really post much on Instagram. I don't really, I, I, especially over the last like, year or so, I've, I've really strayed away from social media uh, I, don't, I just think like it's very easy to like I said like, I can just sit down and like get lost scrolling through Instagram like, yeah. and I haven't actually seen anything I'm just like you know and you don't get any like I find like you know like, the, especially like creatively like the, the my most creative times is when I'm really bored and you know, like stuff like this is a very easy way. I'm putting the clock on it, but watching stuff no, no. Is very, I find it's a very easy way to stop you from being just bored enough from doing something about it. Mm. Like it's just like it's a little bit cracky. Yeah, it's just very passive. And... Yeah, maybe not. That. Maybe that's maybe cracky is the wrong thing. I meant that in an addictive sense. No, no, yeah. it is though, it is though. And like, but like, you just sort of scroll through it, you don't know where the time is going, you, you know, like, you've lost 20 minutes, you haven't even started your day, you just sat there. Like, so, so Mr. Mime's asking, who's your, oh, Nitin, first of all, says, very modest. James is a beats genius, absolutely, completely. And Mr. Mime saying, who's your guest name? Uh, this guy's called Breakage, he's one of the best producers on the planet, it has to be said, he's amazing. So, just, you know, he's all modest and fucking shy, but he's fucking great. Breakage. And also, you know what, bruv, you're right. Like, the, the times we've been sort of mash-up, I relish those. They're awesome. Mm. Yeah. When I've been mash-up talking shit to you, that's been yeah, no, the been funny ones. Been times where it's been the other way around, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he's got a quick question. What are you saying, bruv? His fingers typing. Oh. There you go. How do, you get How do you get a smooth top end? I would say with like a balding or a razor blade. No, I'm joking. No, I, I, I'd like to say there was like some secret trick. Like, you know, like I sort of treat everything the same. Like if it needs like more top end, I'll just give it more top end. 
And I know that sounds like a pass. <laughs> like, that sounds like a massive pass. But it really is that simple. Like, I'll just put more top end in it. Like, you know, like, I used to follow this thing where people were like, oh, you can only, like, you know, like, cut and not please them me to, and you shouldn't do this and you should do that. And I was like, yeah, but I want, like, a lot more top end, so I'm just going to, like, put more top end in it. But, like, I try and not, like, overdo it. And, like, what I've got into now is actually having less, and having less top end, and then sort of see where it's at come mastering because it's easier to add more than it is to take it away and sometimes it's very, it's very easy to like overdo it on the top end you know like it's, it's like having like not enough bass in your tune it could be really hard to bring that bass up i think anyway it could be really hard to bring that bass up that almost doesn't exist than it is to turn it down like you can turn down the bass and you know like it'd still be really warm and like there's loads of it to go around and I feel like it's the opposite effect with the tops. So I've actually started, like, calming them a bit. Because I, I played something... Uh, I played something before, and, like, my, my friend got this, like, perfect studio machine thing, and it just recalibrates all your monitors, and it sounds perfect in the room. And I played a mix that I was really happy with, and the top end was just killing me. I was like, hmm, I don't know. And the guy who installed it was like, yeah, no, that's that's not the system. That's your tune. You know, you got too much stuff in. Fact. And I went back and I listened to it and I was like, yeah, this has got way too much stuff in. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just I just turn it up with an EQ. That's, that's it. Like, uh, I do a lot of, like, more EQ than I thought. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, my phone's on twenty percent. Uh, but yeah, I do more ah. EQ than probably most people think that I should do. But you know, uh, it is what it is. Well, that's your weapon, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's what it is. It's, you know, like, I think I think there, there's there's you know like good practices to keep, but I don't think there's a right or wrong way to do anything as long as as long as the end result sounds good, like, what does it matter? You know? Yeah. yeah. Like, I think, you know, Which I guess kind of fits into your vibes philosophy of just like making it still have enough imperfections to run. Yeah. Like just, just enough imperfections and as, uh, as stripped back as possible. That's, that's the sort of like, you know, I want it clear and clean, but a bit grotty. And I want it to just have just enough stuff and everything needs to serve a purpose. Like, if something's only there for, like, some kind of, like, I don't know, like, the musical effect of cosmetic value, then it needs to go, you know? But I better go because uh, my my partner and my son are outside. She's lovely. She... What's the word I'm looking at? She basically took him on a drive. Uh, nice. Oh, so we could yeah, do this chat. Quick, quick drive down to the bottle bank and back while while we did this. Oh. So, uh, uh, me up. too. I went to my own bottle bank, which is next to me. <laughs> on that note, I shall say see you later and open the front door. See you later, bro. Hey, right. it's, gin, care, it's not gin and tonic, it's JD and Coke. Anyway, um, take James, care. Have a good evening. Right, take care. Bye. Bye.